Hello, welcome to episode 16 of the Eldenwood Craft Podcast. My name's Emma and this is my podcast all about my crafty life, just moving some things around to give me some space. Um, as I said, my name's Emma and I am a knitter and um, a want-to-be sewer. I've got some plans for later in the year for starting to knit some garments, but you'll hear all about that as it happens. Um, and I also have an Etsy shop where I sell project bags for uh, crafters. If you have visited the podcast before, a very big welcome back to you. Thank you very much for coming back again. And if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoy the podcast. If you do, please do give me a thumbs up. Um, thumbs up down here if you're... Um, Oh, that's where my thumbs up is anyway um, and uh, do subscribe as well and then you'll get notified of when the next podcast is uh, published right uh, what will I be talking about today I've got my notes here so it is going to be the usual format of things we will have uh, one finished object we'll have a number of whips um, I won't show you everything that I've been working on since I last recorded, which was about six weeks ago, I think. Um, it would uh, make this podcast too long, but I've picked out the one, two, three things that I um, have got something to say about, really. Um, and then there will be the, uh, the notes and query section towards the end and a very brief uh, shop piece of shop update news uh, well, what was I going to say there show notes and links to all the places where you can find me online are down below that's where all the important information is um, I try and include links to all my patterns and the designers and um, yarn dyers and shops and things like that um, it does take quite a lot of time so I may not manage all of them but um, if you need any information about anything that I've shown and it's not easily accessible from the show notes do just ask very happy to um, help you find your way that's what it's all about isn't it enabling people and um, and that sort of thing right I hope you're all well it's the beginning of June now recording on uh, Sunday afternoon the sun is in and out today so you may find the light here I've got my big um, dining room window dining room doors there and the light may flicker in flicker in and out so um, that's why the light will change if it does it might not it might stay cloudy we'll see right um, let's just get cracking with um, with the show So I'm going to start off with a finished object. This is also, um, this is also, so this finished object is something that you will not have seen before on the podcast. If you follow me on Instagram, you will do, you will have seen it. Um, the story behind it, um, one of my friends on Instagram, Sue, was in a bit of a knitting rut and um, couldn't find the right project to um get her knitting kick started again and she'd asked for some suggestions of simple one skein um, patterns that she could have a go at to see if that worked um, and I was having a look around and I'd seen this pattern um, online and I'd thought about knitting it a few times but hadn't got round to it um, but I suggested it to her and I thought well let's knit along with Sue so I did I loved knitting it absolutely love knitting it I finished it for me very quickly for a shawl probably in about three weeks um, didn't get bored knitting it one little bit however I don't really like wearing it um, let me show you the shawl looks really nice on screen so this this is the B simple variations it's a pattern by I've got my notes here um, Carolyn Glaus Todrank. Apologies if that's not the right way to say it, um, but it's a um, it's 
an asymmetrical triangular, quite a shallow shawl. Um, I don't really wear the very deep triangular shawls. Uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and I knit it out of a skein of um, homespun house yarn that I had had kicking around for a little bit in the Harvest Moon colourway. The yarn is just absolutely stunning. I don't know if Molly still dyes this up, but if she does, I can wholeheartedly recommend it. It's a, um, I would say that it's a, um, trying to think of the word. It's a coffee color, coffee uh, background with speckles of um, deep reds and golds and there's some sort of tealy blues in here as well I think I've seen um, and some orangey golden colours. It's really, sorry that wasn't a very good <laughs> picture was it? Um, so yeah, Loved knitting it, really simple, it's just garter stitch and eyelets. It's nice and long, you can see, well you can't see, the wingspan is, it's greater than my, my arm's length. Um, why don't I like wearing it? I just come to the realisation that I'm not massively keen, for me, on wearing shawls with these long pointy ends. I prefer something a bit more blunt or um, something knit on the bias rather than um, the, the dangly, dingly dangly ends. I put it on there's absolutely nothing wrong with the shawl it's just a personal personal opinion. Let's see if I can stand up and you'll see you'll see what it looks like wrapped round. See, I just, for me, I, just, I don't know. Maybe I'll grow into it. Um, but I don't normally knit asymmetrical shawls, so I don't know. The jury's out. The jury's out. I know lots of you do like to wear um, triangular or asymmetrical shawls. Um, I can't make my mind up. It looks lovely in the looks lovely in the um, the pattern picture on Ravelry and as I said I really enjoyed so I'm moving around a lot I really really enjoyed knitting it and it looks beautiful so maybe it'll be um, maybe it'll be a shawl actually that I wear under a coat because then you won't see the dingly dangly bits will you I don't know does anyone else like dingly dangly bits Right, so that's my finished object though. The, the yarn is really soft and squishy and beautiful and the colours are just perfect. I love those. Um, but yeah, I've talked enough about that. Let's move on. Right, on to my works in progress. So I've got three to show you today. I will start off with the smallest one. Uh, I have a half, fin half finished object with this and it's a sock with an end hanging out at the toe and if you were to look in here <laughs> you'd see the ends in here as well. So I haven't sewn the ends in yet. Um, it's a vanilla sock. The yarn is beautiful even for me who's a non-pink lover. Um, really love this yarn. So it's yarn from Down Sheepy Lane. The dyer is Debbie and she just does some of the most lovely, beautifully dyed yarns that you will find. Um, highly recommend checking her out. Um, this is the yarn that she dyed up for the Flower Power Fund. It's her Hellebore yarn, based on the Hellebore flower. If I hold it up close you can see so it's a pale pink base with some um, very deep pinks and greens really really pretty really enjoyed knitting that um, 
the sock pattern it's not just a vanilla sock pattern well it's it's a toe up sock pattern so if you remember from my last episode i had been exploring knitting uh, socks toe up and i'm still really enjoying that way of doing it what i find um, i like about toe up sock sock knitting is that the cast casting on your toe and knitting up your toe is a lot lot less of a faff than casting on 64 stitches for a cuff and then having to do 16 odd rows of um, two by two rib which I don't really enjoy doing but mentally doing it the other way doesn't seem quite so tedious so I think possibly toe up sock knitting is the new way for me um, I was lucky enough to be offered um, Lou, Lee, who is Luli on Instagram and Ravelry and um, Shop Luli on Etsy. Um, Lee very kindly offered me an advanced uh, copy of her new toe up basic sock pattern. Um, and Lee's patterns are one of my favourite um, patterns to knit up. They're written so well. Um, I highly recommend uh, that you, uh, if you're in the market for sock patterns, highly recommend that you look for, look at Lee's patterns. Can't get my words out today. Um, so Lee very kindly forwarded me a copy of her um, toe up sock pattern a couple of weeks before it was released and I set to knitting on these straight away. She has a, um, I don't know what she calls the, the toe, but it's, um, it's not a, a wedge toe, it's, uh, it has increases in four places. So it creates um, a bit like the whirlwind toe, I think. Um, but what is different about Lee's pattern is the heel that she uses. If I move that down on my sock block a bit, you can see. So there's the gusset increases. And then she uses a flegal, sorry, blocking my mouth out. She ha includes a flegal heel, um, uh, Come on, Emma, what's the word? She includes a flegal heel pattern within the pattern. And that's what that is. And it's funny, I was sitting knitting this and I got to this bit and I was knitting away and I thought, where's the heel flap? I've done the gusset, but where's the heel flap? I wonder if there's something wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Lee. And um, then I realized, of course, that it was me being stupid. Um, and that actually this was a specific type of heel construction. And I looked it up and um, I think I'm right in saying that it's a flegal heel. It's really good. Um, makes um, the knitting of the sock really quick, actually. I don't know how flegal heels wear. I will put this to the test. I will give it a good rigorous test and um, report back at some point. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the, the sock. I have started on sock number two. Let me show you the cake of yarn. It's beautiful, isn't it? really pretty and then I have made oh significant progress <laughs> there we go I've just finished the heel and just started the the um just started knitting on the rest of the foot if I sh you might be able to see if I show you there there are the increases for the toe so yeah so really enjoying knitting on that Thank you, Lee, for the um, preview copy. Um, if you want to get your hands on a copy of that, have a look on Ravelry. I think it's on Ravelry. And um, yeah, I, I do recommend Lee's patterns, as I said, really good. Right, so that's the sock. I have been sort of knitting on my year's end socks by Vera Valamaki, but I'm not showing you those because I haven't made particular progress really on those. Um, what I will show you next, um, which one of the two? Let me show you this one. So I showed you last time that I have been knitting, I'd started knitting on my boxy sweater pattern by Hohi Locatelli. You will all know the boxy, I'm sure. Hohi has two boxy patterns, a round neck, boat neck probably, and a v-neck. So I've chosen to do the v-neck. And 
that's how far I've got. I'm really pleased with it. Now that the now that I've started knitting in the round for the body, you can um, really see um, see it coming together. Last time I was probably about here, so I've knit that much in about six weeks. I don't have a huge amount of time for knitting, um, so I, um, I knit when I can. Um, so for six six weeks knitting, when I have been knitting on other things as well, that's quite good for me. So the yarn is Drops Nord. Um, I forget the colourway number, but I will put that in the show notes. But it's this beautiful um, beigey colour. Let me see if I can find the, the ball. It's getting all tangled up in my bag. <laughs> it's a bit sorry for itself, doesn't it? Um, but there we go. So that's, that's the, the ball, what's left of it. Storing this, I should say, in my gorgeous bag from Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Crafts. I love this bag. It's a really good size and very comfortably holding that jumper in there um, as it current of the size it currently is. Um, what else can I tell you about this other than that there are lots of ends flying around? I mentioned last time that I had made a bit of a mess up on the garter ridges. You can just about see that they are not perfect but from the front that doesn't look too bad and I did exactly the same on that side um, again you can't well you can sort of see but again from the front looks absolutely fine it will be huge but that's what it's meant to be I'm toying actually you can see the arm get for the armholes there I'm toying of not knitting sleeves at all I don't know what that will look like I might try it on when it's finished and see but I thought it might be quite nice with just a um, just a very short um, cuff around the end here and then so it would sort of come to there and then I could wear it with um, a long sleeve t-shirt underneath I will see it'll be a few months till I get to that stage but um, it's an option otherwise you have um, quite short sleeves anyway but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I'm loving how that yarn is looking out. Drops Nord is, um, find the ball band. It's a really cheap yarn. I think I paid about one pound ten pence a ball. Might be wrong. It might have been twenty or thirty p more than that. Um, and I can't remember how many balls I needed. Maybe I needed 10 or 11 balls for the whole sweater. So that puts that, that jumper in at around 15 pounds. That's not bad, is it? Less than 15 pounds. Um, there's the back. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I've really enjoyed knitting on it. I said last time that I enjoy this monotonous round and round knitting. That doesn't bother me at all after dinner when I come home in the evenings um, sit sit with my husband on the sofa and we watch something on television and I knit on that or I have been actually what I've been doing the last couple of weeks um, I have been knitting one thing on on one thing for the whole week and that's really helped with um, seeing some progress so a couple of weeks ago all I knit on was my boxy sweater and then this week I've been knitting on what's in this project bag um, and yeah as I said that's seen some real progress next week I think it will be sock week um, maybe I'll finish my second Luli sock so that is the boxy sweater right short intermission there where I had to go and open the um, the doors I was overheating somewhat um, so you might hear some noise from outside now hopefully it will be bird song but it might also be traffic um, we live on a very busy main road, um, so we have a the main road into town. We live on the main road into town, um, so that's the traffic that you'll hear. Right, I was about to show you my third work in progress, living in one of my project bags, and this is the Carade shawl, patterned by um, Paulina Caru or Lena Knits on Instagram. She has a lovely feed. I would recommend um, following 
uh, her feed for some beautiful um, pictures of her knitting and so on. So the Carade shawl, just to recap for you if you're not aware of it, this is a picture of it. It's a stunning two skein fingering weight wrap. Um, this sample was knit from Tuscan Knits yarn, um, which I would absolutely love to get my hands on, but um, customs fees make it pretty much prohibitive. prohibitive? Um, maybe one day when I go to the States, we're actually hoping to go to the States next year, um, visit to New York for a significant birthday of mine. <laughs> um, so yeah, we love New York. We've been a few times, my husband and I, and we took our daughter two or three years ago um, and she just fell in love with New York. So we're really hoping to go back uh, in a year's time um, for, a, for a visit and do some yarn shopping. Um, so maybe while I'm there, I'll be able to pick up some Tuscan knits, who knows? Anyway, the yarn I'm using for this is um, this from Belinda Harris Reed. It's the softest, most gorgeous yarn I have ever handled. I'm trying to find the ball band for you. So it's, this is the ball band, Belinda Harris Reed Warm Moonshine. Let me undo the staple and you'll be able to see it a bit better. There we go. So it is a 70% alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere, 400 meters to 100 grams, undyed natural grey. Beautiful. I picked this up at Fiber East. I would really like to get some more. I'm not sure where she is exhibiting this year. Um, I don't think I'm going to Fiber East this year. Um, I will be going to Yarningham at the end of the middle of July. Middle of July. Um, if anyone else is going, do let me know. It'd be great to meet up. I think I'm going to go on this Saturday. Um, but I, I don't know where else Belinda is um, selling this year, but I'd really like to get my hands on some more of this. It's so soft. I'm not sure how well it will wear because it is so soft, but we will see. And I've made some quite good progress on this. Admittedly, I have been knitting it for many, many months. Uh, I can't quite remember when I cast on. Part of me thinks it might be the beginning of the year, which is a long time ago. It's six months ago, obviously. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm enjoying knitting on it. Um, I didn't pick it up for probably a couple of months, actually, because I was busy on other things. But I have knit, it's all rolled up at the moment, but I have knit that much. That's quite a significant chunk. I'm well over halfway. Um, this is what I'm going to show you. So that is the first half of it and I'm knitting a second, a repeat of that for the second part. Um, it's really simple. It's just eyelets, um, sort of yarn overs and knit two togethers. The idea behind the shawl is, where did I put the, um, there it is, the idea behind the shawl is that it was inspired by the Scottish landscape, heather covered moors, rolling hills, meandering footpaths, so the different sections in the, um, uh, in the shawl represent the, the different aspects of the Scottish landscape. I got to the end of the first, oops, the, the noise you can hear is the needles on the table, sorry. I'd got to the end of the first half and I had a decent amount of yarn left from my first skein. And I thought I'd really like to get the most out of that yarn. I don't really want to have, um, you know, 30 or 40 grams left at the end of it because it is such lovely yarn. And I do like a nice long wrap. So I thought I'll, um, I'll freestyle a bit. I will add on a little bit of extra in the middle just to make the most of the yarn. So what I did, where's it gone? So I started there, knit, 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 lovely knitting. 
really enjoying it. I really like this section actually. And I got to the end of here and I thought, so this this is where I thought, let's freestyle. It's not really freestyling, is it? It's just a bunch of garter stitch, garter stitches. And then I started the next bit. I now realise that that's probably a mistake. That looks just ridiculous, doesn't it? What I should have done was either not include that garter stitch at all or what would have been so much better was to put another repeat of this footpath section, this is, onto here to even out the symmetry. And I was really, really disappointed with myself for not having realised that that wasn't the right thing to do, just to leave it like that. But there was no way I was um, frogging back. So I'm just going to live with it. I recognise or I realise that actually that garter stitch is probably going to spend its time at the back of my neck where I won't see it and um, if you're looking closely enough to see it then so be it. But yeah, so I'm hmm, a little bit disappointed with myself. And I really wanted to get the most out of that yarn. But, well, you know, we'll live with it. It's only knitting. The fashion police aren't going to come away and come along and take it away, are they? So that's the Carade wrap. Really lovely. I hope by the next time that I record that that will be finished. I hope that my boxy will be a good way towards being finished. It won't be finished, but... Um, it'll be heading that way and I hope that my down sheepy lane socks will be finished. Everything else that I've been working on, so I did a little bit of work on my year's end socks. Um, I did a little bit of work on my simple beret that's, that I'm knitting out of Dererum Natura Gilead yarn, but not enough for you to um, be particularly interested in how it's looking. Uh, but next podcast will show you some progress on those if they've not been finished um i also picked up my crochet blanket and scrappy square blanket to do some work on that my scrappy square blanket my cozy memories blanket you will be familiar with my crochet blanket you won't be um or you might be if you follow me on instagram or if you have a really really good memory and can remember what i was podcasting about a year ago uh, because i started it a year ago and put it down a year ago and hadn't picked it up since um now i haven't got that here but actually let me go and find it for you because it is worth having a look at bear with me a second <laughs> microphone back on right here we go so I keep my blankets in my my version of my sheepy bag I won't show you this the cozy memories blanket today but let me show you so oops sort myself out right yarn whoa that's pink <laughs> and blanket gosh the pinks come out really strong in that don't they so it is just a very straightforward crochet blanket i think um so there's it folded in four i think i picked it up again and from about here i've knit uh, knit crocheted about this much it's such a relaxing crochet i decided to pick it up because my friend caroline um had started a granny stripe blanket one weekend i think it might have been the bank holiday weekend we had recently i can't quite remember and it just something in my brain said oh i've got a crochet project on the go that i quite fancy having a go at so i pulled it out of um my whip pile and yeah i've really enjoyed it so i've pulled it out properly keep it with my cozy memories blanket which I have in the living room all the time and it's really lovely just to sit and um, do a round or so while watching TV in the evening 
Um, what I've been doing for yarn is um, made a magic ball a year ago using some scraps. Um, that was a really good, fun process to do. I got myself about 100 grams of um, yarn from a uh, for my magic ball. Um, when I knit on my Cozy Memories blanket, invariably there's quite a good chunk of yarn left from either a 10 or a 20 gram mini. And that goes into a bag of um, scrap yarn and then that goes into a, a magic ball or onto swaps and gifts and things. So yeah, so I've really enjoyed that. I don't, as you know, I don't really put a lot of colour into my um, uh, into my knits, so my scarves and shawls and things. But the one place that I do like colour is on my feet with my socks and in my blankets. So that's a fourth unexpected whip. Right, where do we go now? So we've got some incoming yarn to have a look at, a little bit of enabling for you. And um, I want to have a chat about the Make 9 Make Along. I have got some prize winners to announce from a couple of giveaways. I've got a new giveaway to talk about as well. And then there'll be an Etsy shop update and that will be us done. I hope that we might be able to get this in um, a little bit shorter than more recent episodes. I'd be I'm not sure how long I've been talking for, but it'd be brilliant to get this in under 45 minutes or so. So let's crack on with incoming yarn. Two yarns to tell you about. First off, um, you will have seen that I have bought some Twisted Limon yarn in the past. I absolutely love it. I don't need any sock yarn, but when Karen has an update, I don't always manage to get something. Sometimes I don't want to buy anything. Um, but this time the stars aligned and I was in the mood for buying some yarn and there was a skein left that I really, really liked. And this is it. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So it's navy, uh, sort of salmon pink, pale blue and a grey. And this is Karen's um, perfectly denim colourway. It's a 75-25. 100 grams, 425 meters. There is her card and there are the details. Hold that in front of my face. Yeah, I love that. That will go into a box that I have of um, self-striping gobstoppers. I've probably got about four or five, maybe not quite that many, maybe three or four gobstoppers. Um, I do love them. They are they're lovely to look at. Um, and I will be taking a couple of these away on holiday with me this year. I knit a pair um, of Twisted Limon socks last year on holiday. I've got another one on the go from last year's holiday, which I'll finish this year. Um, and maybe a couple of other pairs will get knit. We'll see. The other yarn that I purchased was this. I'll show you one skein. So it's from Sherry Iris. If you don't know Sherry, uh, you should do. Sherry um, is a knitter. She is an embroiderer. She makes the most beautiful project bags um, from gorgeous fabrics. She uses a lot of linen and Liberty prints. And she embroiders um, usually a floral motif or um, a bird onto plain linen. Um, it's just exquisite. I showed you one of her bags an episode or two ago. Um, that we have one for uh, a prize in the Make Nine along. Sherry has also, um, also dyes yarn. And when I saw this, I just thought that's got to come back that's got to come home to me. So this is Sherry's sock weight yarn, 100 grams, uh, another 75-25, and it's in her Gilmore Girls Coffee at Luke's colourway. And it's, oh, I love it so much. And what I've decided to do, I, I won't do this all the time, but um, 
I have so many single skeins of sock yarn in my stash that I could knit socks for the rest of my life probably and will never get through it. So I have decided not to, unless I can absolutely not help myself, which we all know what's going well, to happen. Um, but what I'd like to do is pick up two skeins of yarn when I buy these beautiful hand, hand dyed skeins. And that way um, I can knit two skeins up into a nice big wrap, similar sort of size to the Karade wrap. That's what I thought I'd do with these two. Oh, looking at them now just makes me think I must get those wound up. What I'd really like to do is to knit up a rectangular um, wrap that's knit on the bias with some eyelet, um, some yarn over patterning in it. Quite fancy making something up myself and seeing how we go with that and I think that will look lovely knit up in that. Yes, yeah, so pleased with that. Sherry also put in this beautiful um, lavender pouch that she made herself. There was also a mini that came with these. I haven't, I think I put that in my mini box. Um, yeah, so I can't show you that today, but this, oh, just smells beautiful. So thank you, Sherry. Um, all Sherry's details will be down in the show notes. I do highly recommend that you look at her Instagram feed. It's gorgeous. And look at her Etsy shop. She is a very clever lady. Oh, and she also has a gorgeous podcast, one of my favourites. Um, so yeah, check that out as well. So that's all my purchases. Um, I have got some other things to show you, but they will fall into uh, the next section, uh, the Make Nine chatter. Um, we are now six months into the Make Nine Make Along. Um, details of that, details of what the Make Nine Make Along is, is in the Ravelry show notes. Uh, no, not Ravelry show notes. In the Ravelry group, there is a chatter thread for the Make Nine Make Along. It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, it's basically you pick nine items at the start of the year or any at any point in the year that you would like to knit up, um, knit those up through the year and at the end of 2018 we will be announcing a grand prize winner. Um, throughout the year, at the end of every three months, we're also announcing a prize winner of, of um, for people that have finished objects in the preceding three months. Um, so that's what the Make 9 is. My Make 9 has been slow progress. What have I knit? Um, one of my squares was socks, so we're okay with that. One of my squares is, a, is the simple beret, so we're making progress on that. Um, one of my squares is the boxy. And I think those are all the squares that I've touched. Um, I've got a couple of cardigans in there. I've got a couple of other shawls. And I can't remember quite what else off the top of my head. I wonder if I have a look actually on... No, I won't have a look. If you want to see what my Make 9 grid is, you can have a look on the um, chatter thread in the Ravelry group. Um, but within the chatter thread, and the chatter thread is amazing, you guys are just... Um, some of you are really prolific. You are ploughing through your your nine objects. Others are have been saying, "Oh, don't like this one now. I quite fancy swapping it, swapping in another pattern." And if you've seen recently, I've um, posted a uh, post in the chat thread that says, "Yes, I think now that we're six months into the into the make along, it is time to have a swap around." So. Have a look in the chatter thread. The first post in the chatter thread has got um, the rules for the swap, but I just want to make it really simple. You can swap now up to three patterns that you know that you're not going to knit um, in for three patterns that you do want to knit. So full details of the the full details of the. Um, make nine are in the chatter thread. Rambling, aren't I? Sorry. 
Uh, the other thing to say about the Mate 9 is that the prize winner that I announced last time still hasn't got in touch with me. Um, if, you, if you don't get in touch with me by the 1st of July, I'm going to redraw the prize and I will announce the prize in the chatter thread. Um, so look back on the 1st of July to see if um, we've got a new prize winner for, for the first quarter. The next quarter will be drawing to an end as well around that time. Or not even around that time, at that time. Um, and when I podcast again, I will announce the new winner for the April, May, June finished objects. Um, talking of prizes, we have had some new prizes in. Let me show you these. First off, excuse me, uh, my lovely friend Helen, Helen Eccles on Instagram, has really kindly um, sent in some stitch markers uh, as a prize. Let me open these up. Helen, um, love these. Helen made these herself, and you can see there's a bee and a sheep and a birdie and an owl and a ladybird and they're all held on this beautiful um hello <laughs> oh, they're all they're all held on this beautiful oval so that will go into the prize package thank you ever so much helen that's um you're so kind helen's lovely um helen also really kindly sent me a little something sent me a tin i love a tin Simple things keep me happy, but I love a tin. But inside that tin were my own little stitch marker of a birdie and an enamel pin of a robin. And we all know how much I love a robin. So thank you, Helen. That was just lovely. I can put these into use now. I've been saving them. So, new prize there. Um, a couple of other prizes have come in. Just get them out. Actually, let me do it this way. So, uh, the first prize um, has come in from um, Catherine. Um, let me find Catherine's card so I can let you know her surname. Bear with me. Actually, I mentioned this on my podcast last time, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I did. So Catherine, who is Bed of Roses on Instagram, and that's the name of her Etsy shop as well, uh, contacted me and said, would I like a prize for the Make Nine? Of course I would, I said. She said, would you like a $50 gift voucher prize for her shop? Of course I would, I said. Thank you very much. Um, would you like... To pick something from my shop yourself she said of course I would I said thank you Catherine um, and then I saw a, for a couple of weeks ago um, one of Catherine's new bags that she had um, shown on Instagram and I fell in love with it I fell in love with the simplicity of it um, and Catherine said that that could be a gift for me which I just so kind of you thank you Catherine so so much um, she said she'd pop it in the post and I thought it'd be nice to be able to show you the sort of work that Catherine does so that the winner when when we give one of Catherine's bags away um, you'll be able to see the sort of bags that she makes and you'll be able to get excited about it anyway rambling again so uh, this weekend yesterday I received my prize from uh, not my prize, my gift from Catherine, and this is it. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So it's, um, I think, excuse me, I've got the hair in my mouth. Um, so it's a, I'm sure this is linen or a linen cotton mix, geometric print, and this linen very pale dusty pink on the back absolutely beautiful rose gold zip lovely piece of velvety ribbon as a 
pull and a ring on the side. Inside, gorgeous, mm, beautiful print. So that's just lovely. Really, really love that, as you can tell. That wasn't all that Catherine sent me. I was just, um, yeah, just amazed. So there was a little box. Oh, as so, there was a lavender sachet with a beautiful um, progress keeper on it. And inside the lavender sachet, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, there are some rose leaves. It's just lovely. I love the smell of lavender. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but um, I love it. There was also a little cardboard box, like this. When I opened it up, inside was something wrapped in black tissue paper. When I opened that up, I pulled out this. So, pink leather cord, and on the end, I was just blown away by this. All that lovely knitting jewellery. So there is a whole bunch of progress keepers on there. All pinks and, and I think this is antique brass. Sorry for getting too close. Um, got all these beautiful stones and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. How thoughtful is that? Look, there's an... When it stops wiggling, you'll see that's an E. There are two of those. Really touched by that. So pretty. Oops. Um, yeah, so there's there's five or six of them there, and there's also oops, sorry. There's also a clip with um, a bunch of stitch markers as well. I just love that. So obviously you wear it around your neck. It's beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. So that will give you, oh, the other thing to show you, just the, the box that it came in. I don't know how well this will come out. Look, that was taped to it and there's some bits of flour in there. And there's Catherine's, Catherine's card. Catherine Storehill. I don't know if that's how you say it, Catherine. Um, and there's the back bed of roses. It says on there, Catherine Storehill, maker, dreamer and wildflower. Catherine's Instagram feed is lovely well worth following along um, and her Etsy shop is lovely she's she's got a few of these bags in so this is mine the idea for the prize will be that the winner can um, go to Catherine's store and pick out something up to the value of $50 um, so you will be in for a treat when we announce that one um, I also picked up this weekend another prize for you uh, from a UK based independent dyer, a lady by the name of Hayley. Hayley, thank you so much. The yarn that you sent is just beautiful. I love it. Um, Hayley sent two skeins of yarn. These are they. Hayley is, turn that around the right way, Ducky Darlings. Put one down. There's her. Isn't that cute? So she is Ducky Darlings on um, Instagram, on Facebook, and on her on Etsy where she sells her yarn. Haley's based up in the um, I think you're up in Derbyshire, aren't you, Haley? Somewhere around there. Um, I see you. I see on your Instagram feed that you go to Chesterfield Market sometimes, um, which rings has a bit of a place in my heart Chesterfield Market my um, uncle and aunt and their family used to live in Chesterfield and we used to go up there every Christmas and have just the best Christmases um, and so I know Chesterfield Town Centre very well um, and it used to be a real treat to go into um, into town and to the market there um, yeah really liked it so um, little bit of um, little bit of reminiscing when I saw that Hayley um, now Haley said that um, oh I don't know what to do here. Haley said that I could keep one of these skeins of yarn and I could give one to you as a prize. I'm going to cogitate on that one. 
Um, because I always feel guilty about keeping something. And I know that um, these would both make beautiful pairs of socks. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I haven't told you the colourways, have I? Turkish Delights. Isn't that very apt? It comes across beautifully on the screen. You can see it's a lovely high twist. I love high twist yarns. And then this one is Rudolph. And you can see, I'm guessing... Let me know if I've got this wrong, Hayley, but there are the <laughs> bits of red on there are for his nose and the rest, the, the browns, the creams are his coat of fur. So yeah, I, I always feel quite guilty. If somebody says to you, here's a prize, you can have one for yourself if you want, or you can give them both away. The knitter in me would love to keep one. The podcaster in me would love to give them both away. So I'm going to have a think about it. However, I do know that I'm going to give one of these away for this episode, and I will talk about that in a minute. So thank you ever so much, Hayley. I rambled on a bit there about the yarn and about Chesterfield and all that, but um, it's lovely. Thank you. I love getting prizes like that in the post to give away to you. Right. Okay, prize winners for me to announce. Um, I had two giveaways um, that I announced in the last episode. One was for um, a cowl that had been, a cowl pattern that had generously been donated by Naomi, who is Cozy Cute Knits. Um, the cowl was the, um, the only way is up cowl. And the other prize, um, if I can find it, I have it in front of me. Somewhere here it is. Is for the uh, Maker's Merch pin. Uh, thank you um, to Kelly and Mars for donating that. Lovely. So both of these, I, I did all this before I started podcasting. Otherwise, I would be... Um, faffing for too long uh, but the winners are so drum roll are you ready um the winner of the makers merch pin is now uh, so this is funny because i've already talked about this person today the winner is hjd7 on ravelry who is Haley, who is the dyer behind um ducky darlings so congratulations Haley. i will um pop that in the post to you if you message me and let me have your address um pure coincidence um i um drew for those just before i started podcasting um and yeah Haley, your number came up so that's coming to you very soon Haley. the other prize the um the cowl pattern the only way is up cowl um, and that has been, the prize for that has been drawn from the comment thread in the um, YouTube comments from the last video. And that prize winner is Jules May. So Jules, if you contact me with your Ravelry name and I will pass that on to Naomi and she will forward you a copy of her pattern. Thank you everyone for entering and thank you to the... Um, to the prize donators. It's great giving things away, isn't it? Right, um, new giveaway. So I said in my last episode that when we got to 2,000 subscribers, we'd have a giveaway, and we have got to 2,000 subscribers. Thank you to you all. I am absolutely flabbergasted. I started this coming up for two years ago now, I think. I think it will be two years in October. And I'm not a naturally confident person about speaking in public. And I find this whole thing about staring at your phone completely <laughs> unnatural. But I really enjoy doing it. And I like the, um, the techie bit behind the scenes. I love editing, although it does take a long time. Um, but I like doing all that. And I've learned some great new skills through doing it. And I have... Um, 
made some great new friends through doing it and it feels lovely to be really part of this community so all that is um down to you guys for making it all possible um i would have been surprised if i'd got you know two or three hundred viewers to have gone over two thousand is just it just blows me away I can never quite believe it. I don't, I suspect that not all 2,000 of you actually watch, but um, it's nice to see those numbers, you know, it's a little bit of a, gives you a little bit of a boost. So to say thank you, we will have a giveaway. Someone's just started mowing their lawn. I'm just going to shut the door, bear with me a second. back on how inconsiderate mowing your lawn on a lovely sunny sunday afternoon <laughs> right back to the prize draw uh pride the giveaway so to celebrate the 2000 um subscribers i am going to give away one of my bags don't know which one yet but i will make one for you whoever the winner is um I have a pattern to give you as part of that set, as, as a part of the prize. That is, um, I've got a print out of the first sheet here. The lovely Jen Sheelan, um, pattern designer, knitwear designer, offered me a copy of her latest pattern, which is the Bride by the Sea shawl. Beautiful, isn't it? Let me hold it a bit closer. Really lovely two color two color shawl three color shawl looking at the notes um it's a nice crescent shape which might be the answer actually to my to my dingly dangly <laughs> problem anyway um so jen offered me a copy of that and has offered a copy of that to you so i'm going to give that away as part of the 2000 subscriber giveaway and I was going to use one of Ducky Darling's yarns as um, the uh, giveaway prize. So what I think we'll do, as seeing as I'm being really indecisive, the winner can choose which one of these they would like. So you get the bag, you get the pattern, and you get one of these skeins of yarn, whichever one you fancy. Now I need to think of something that you have to do to win all of that. I will open up a thread in the Ravelry group and I want you to tell me okay sorry I should have thought about this beforehand okay little bit of market research I want you to tell me the one thing that your project bag must have, so you could tell me that it's got to be a zipper, it's got to be a drawstring, it's got to have an internal pocket, it's got to be interfaced, it's got to be box bottom, it's got to have a handle, anything, just what one thing, one thing only, that your ideal project bag must have. Um, just curiosity, I suppose. Um, so and I will open up a thread in the Ravelry group. I will put the instructions in there enter once and um i will draw the prize winner at the um when i record again um, which should be in july so thank you again to you all for putting your faith in me and sticking with me um as people always say there are so many podcasts out there now um i know i joined in when it was becoming quite popular there were already plenty around um, and there are even more so now. So I am truly, truly grateful to each and every one of you who have subscribed and who continue to watch and who comment and who like, and it's just brilliant. Um, I would love to be able to give more back to you. I'd love to be able to podcast more regularly. I'd love to be able to um, have my Etsy shop updates more often. I'd love to be able to um, put, put out some uh, more knitting than I do. Um, unfortunately, I have to. I have, I have a paid job um, that I have to do full time. If anyone wants to bankroll me to um, to do this full time, I'd be up for that. 
um, but anyway so yeah it's just a joy to do this so thank you all right all that's left then is just a very quick word on my Etsy shop so it's been a while since I had a shop update the last one was April when um, I did the flower power fund bags with Kelly from Lay Family Yarns since then I've been making sheet bags we're up to heading up to the mid 50s now um, and I have been putting together a shop update for you I am hoping that the shop will be updated in the next probably about 10 days I think would be the time frame um, but I have a pile of them here and I've got a pile upstairs that um, still being made I just thought I'd give you a quick run through of some of the things that will be in the bag so I've got a couple of these lovely notions pouches um, this is a canvas a uh, linen cotton fabric a couple of those will be in the shop I've got a small number of these small sock size fabrics which are lovely and summery uh, and then I've got a couple of new fabrics which you won't have seen before actually so the new fabrics are related to this so these are they these, these all need a bit of TLC in a an iron and a um, bit of looking after they will obviously be ironed before they go in the shop and before they're sent out but uh, these cranes the grey and the navy again these are sort of one to two skein size bags so I've got a good few of those going in I've got a couple of my pine forest bags I'm being really sparing using this I've got a two or three meters left of it maybe not that much actually um, and I can't get any more I have looked and looked and looked online just cannot find it anywhere so I think it may have been a discontinued fabric so there's a couple of those going in and then I've been working on whoops <laughs> uh, some of these you all love this fabric and I don't blame you um, this fabric I think has also been discontinued sadly so once these have all gone they're gone um, I've got a good number of these I don't know that they will all go in the shop this time I might have to put some in the shop next for the next update um, but yeah so working on these and I don't think I'm going to box these bottoms I quite like the look of them as they are and actually you know the thing about a box bottom bag everyone says oh it's great it can stand up on its own because it's got box bottom the thing is if you put a cake of yarn or a ball of yarn in a non-box batten bag it still stands up so anyway so there'll be some of those as well um, so that's the Etsy sh that's what's going into the Etsy shop I as I said I'm not sure when the update will be probably in about 10 days maybe two weeks um, but we'll see I will let everybody know on Instagram and um, in the Etsy shop there's a space for notifications and on my website so that's about it for today I have spoken for longer than 40 45 minutes so I'm probably nearing an hour um, once you start it's very difficult to stop it's been lovely talking to you today. I um, hopefully will see some of you next Saturday. If you are going to Socks on the Beach in Brighton, it'd be lovely to say, to say hello and have a, a natter and a knit with you. I'm really looking forward to that. And as I said, I'll be going to Yarningham, but I very much hope that I will have podcasted before Yarningham. Um, but if I don't, let me know if you're going. Um, it would be great to say hello I think I'm going on the Saturday making arrangements with somebody to meet up with someone and to go along um, with them which would be exciting I'm very excited about this um, I actually won Yarningham tickets through the Flower Power Fund so that's really exciting I never ever win things um, so I'm really looking forward to going to see all the vendors I'm looking forward to seeing um, oh who's who's going to be vending Lay Family Yarns will be vending Nora George is vending all about yarn is vending 
who else is vending? My mind's gone blank. I suspect River Knits are vending, although I might be wrong with that. Um, and there'll be plenty of others. So really great to um, see everybody there. Let me know if you're going. Uh, other than that, that, that is it. I have nothing else to say. My show notes have come to an end. So I will say goodbye. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you've enjoyed the episode, please do give me the thumbs up. The more thumbs up we get, the more it spreads the word about the podcast. Subscribe if you would like to be notified of when I podcast again. Um, the more subscribers we have, the closer we'll get to doing another giveaway because I suspect I'll do one at 3,000 as well. So we're a long way off that, but you never know. Um, so until the next time, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy crafting, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you. Goodbye. I look like I've got a lady sitting on top of my head. Change that. I am overheating. Uh -huh.